Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to version 2 of C++ Crash Course. Now in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about destructors. Now destructors allow us to specify what happens when an object uh, gets destroyed. So this can happen when, say, an object goes out of scope like it would at the end of a function call, or say, um, if we've dynamically allocated that object, and we uh, call delete on the pointer to that object. So it's a very useful thing to understand because it really simplifies things like shared resource management. So if we do something like dynamically allocating memory, we can go ahead and say have our constructor do the dynamic allocation and then automatically free that memory inside of the destructor so we don't no longer have to worry about manually calling new and free anymore. Those are taken care of for us in the constructor and the destructor respectively. And so I encourage you to look up this design pattern called RAII or resource acquisition is initialization. But let's go ahead and open up our example called destructors.cpp and we're going to be looking at this class interray. So it has two private data members, a pointer to some data, and then also a size. And then over here, we'll, we'll have a couple, uh, a couple methods, and we've got our constructor that takes an integer in. So basically, the number of elements we're going to allocate for. And we're going to go ahead and delete the default constructor. So we don't want to say, um, have the user create an interray without specifying some number of elements to allocate. Then we'll go ahead and specify our destructor. So our destructor, just like all these other special methods, it's the same name as the class, so it's also interay. It doesn't have a return type, uh, but it has this tilde out front, so it's tilde interay. And this is going to be basically, um, this is going to be our construct or destructor. And then we'll have a couple other methods. So we'll have a get size and get data. These will just be our getters. They'll return the size and data respectively. Then I've got implemented this operator uh, bracket. So we've talked about implementing operators for our classes in the last video. So basically this is just so that we can index into our array just like we would something like std array or std vector or a C style array. And then I also have a print method here just so we can dump the contents of our uh, int array. So here's our print method here. All it does is print the contents and the pointer followed by all the contents. Um, and then we go ahead and we've got our constructor here. So you see we're doing a dynamic allocation inside of our constructor. And this dynamic allocation behaves the same as if we were to just call it inside of our main function. So it's not going to go out of scope when the object goes out of scope, right? This memory is still going to be allocated. We have to manually call delete on this uh, dynamic allocation. And that's exactly what we do inside of our destructor down here. So we have a constructor that sets data equal to the return of this call to new, so the return of our uh, dynamic allocation. And then we go ahead and delete, right? And we do delete with a bracket to denote that we're deleting, you know, not just a single element, we're deleting the entire chunk of memory that we allocated up here. And we say freeing our allocated memory in the destructor. So inside of our main function, we'll do something very simple. All we'll do is we'll have, uh, we'll create an integer array that'll allocate for 10 elements. We'll set those 10 elements, which will just be the square of i, so it'll be 0 squared, then 1 squared, then 2 squared, then 3 squared, etc. And then we'll just print the values. And what you'll see is that after we, we go ahead and print these values, you'll see another print happen. And that will occur when this function is returning and the destructor for our int array a1 gets called, right? You'll see it'll say freeing our allocated memory. So let's go ahead and quit out of here. And we'll go ahead and uh, compile destructors uh, using G++. We'll compile it and we'll run it. And you see we've got allocating memory in the constructor. Then we have our call to print, which prints the values as well as the pointer up here. And then it says freeing our allocated memory in the destructor. So this automatically happened when the object was going out of scope. So why do you care about something like this? So we'll go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and get rid of our, our binary here and let's go back into our code. So let's go ahead and get rid of our destructor. So we can go ahead and comment this out. And just like we could have a default constructor and a default copy constructor, we can also have a default. Um, we can also have a default um, destructor, right? So here we'll just say uh, default for a destructor now. And then if we go ahead and um, compile this, you'll see we'll of course no longer get the call to that that or that print anymore, saying freeing our memory. And if we go ahead and use a tool like valgrind, um, so let's do valgrind, and we'll go ahead and run uh, destructors. So you'll see here, you know, this is a, a great way to go ahead and you know do debugging using a tool like Valgrind. And then, so it's basically a memory error detector, this mem check. So you see that we've got a leak summary. So we've got a memory leak here. We've got memory that we've allocated that we haven't released. So we've got definitely lost 40 bytes of memory. And that 40 bytes corresponds to 
10 integers, right? Our integers are going to be, or typically going to be four bytes. So 40 divided by four is 10. You see, we've got this, um, these bytes of memory that have you know definitely been lost. And this can be this can be very bad, right? If we forget to do something like free. So with our thing, or with things like a destructor, we can have this uh, freeing of memory automatically managed for us. And something like um, std vector does something very similar. So std vector will automatically do dynamic allocations. And in its destructor, it will free those dynamic allocations. So we don't need to worry about manually calling new and free. So there's more things that we could add to this example as well. And we'll go into that in later videos. So if we want to do, say, more error checking to make sure you know the value of n is greater than or equal to 0, we could check that as well. But that's going to go ahead and do it for this video. It's a brief introduction to um, destructors in C++. As always, all this code can be found online at github.com slash coffee before arch. It's linked in the description below. Feel free to check it out here. So it's under C++ Crash Course. Um, and then if we go to Fundamental Concepts and then Objects, you can find it under Destructor. So here's our example. So feel free to download this, check it out. Let me know if you have any questions. And as always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.